Hi, welcome back for today's recap. Today, we will recap the movie, Demolition. Davis Mitchell lost his wife in a tragic car crash. Since then, he's been struggling to cope with the grief. With the help of a customer service representative from a company he's been sending letters to, Davis starts to fix himself. He began rebuilding his life again, and he started it with the demolition of everything he once knew. Davis Mitchell was in a car with his wife, Julia, in the driver's seat. After Davis's talk with Julia's father, Phil, who is also his boss at the firm where he was working, Julia told Davis about the leak in their refrigerator. Moments later, as they were teasing each other, another vehicle crashed into theirs. Davis was woken up in the hospital by Phil, who tearfully told him that Julia was dead. Instead of crying or showing any form of sadness about his wife's death, Davis just unemotionally went to buy a pack of M.M.s from a vending machine. The pack got stuck, so Davis informed the receptionist about it and asked the guy for a key to open the machine up. The receptionist told Davis that the machine couldn't be opened because it belonged to a vending company. Davis took a picture of the car's brand and went back home, where he learned that his parents were going to come back for a while. During the funeral, Davis went on unemotionally. While the others were crying and grieving, Davis was just unemotionally going on with his whole day. Later that night, Davis remembered about the vending machine and wrote a complaint letter that he was going to send to the vending machine company. In the letter, Davis shared his whole life. Davis works as a successful investment banker at the firm owned by Phil, his father-in-law. He met Julia at a party, and the two of them just hit it off. Phil didn't even like Davis at first, but over time, the man grew to love him. Later on, the two of them got married. Davis finished writing the letter when he saw Phil standing by the door. Phil asked him if he was fine, but he didn't answer and just left. The next day after the funeral, Davis went to work and told his assistant to send his letter to the vending machine company. His assistant was confused about why he was back at work so soon and informed Phil about it. Phil arrived during a meeting and asked Davis for a drink somewhere. Phil reminded Davis that he is important to him too, even though he used to dislike him when he first started dating Julia. Phil opened up about his feelings and how hard it was for a parent to lose a child. But he was perplexed when Davis said something completely off-topic and realized Davis's attention was elsewhere. After their drink, Phil dropped Davis off at the station, where he told him that he wanted to use Julia's money to start a foundation for a merit-based scholarship awarded to the most deserving student. Davis went home and saw a box in his garage. His mother told him that the package was under Julia's name. Davis also saw his father fertilizing the lawn early in the morning. During a train ride, Davis talked to the guy who he once ignored and apologized for ignoring him for the past five years they've been riding the same train. Davis told the guy that he realized he didn't love his wife at all because he didn't feel sad or hurt even after Julia died. When the guy asked him how he felt, Davis randomly pulled a lever down that stopped the train and got into trouble because of it. Davis wrote about all of these things that happened to him in the next letter he wrote to send to the vending machine company again. He opened up about his feelings in the latter, and after writing it, he put the letter in the envelope. In another letter, he talked about how he went to the airport and watched people go by for hours. Davis thought of a lot of things he wanted to do, like taking people's stuff and dumping it on a huge pile, or holding a soldier's gun and protecting the country. He also talked about how he started seeing things differently after Julia's death and started noticing things that he had never noticed before. After Julia's death, everything has become a metaphor for Davis. Davis let his assistant send the letter to the vending machine company again. One night, Davis was getting bothered by the leakage in the fridge and decided to finally do something about it. Davis remembered when Phil told him that when you fix something, you have to take everything apart first to figure out what's more important. Then, once you've figured it out, you can put it all back together. Phil was talking about life in general, but Davis decided to apply this to the fridge anyway and ended up destroying the fridge even more, and was frustrated when he couldn't put it back together again. As he was looking at the mess he created, Davis received a call from Karen Moreno, the customer service representative of the vending machine company he's been sending letters to. Davis has sent four letters so far and is actually planning on sending another. Davis answered that he was just venting and didn't expect anybody to read them. But he was also confused about why a customer service representative from a vending machine company was calling him at 2 o'clock in the morning. Karen apologized for the inconvenience and asked Davis if he had anyone to talk to. Davis didn't answer. Instead, he asked if customer service really was a profession, and Karen ended the call without saying anything else. The next day at work, Davis searched for Karen Moreno, but different faces came up, and his computer had an error. Later that night, he was at dinner with Julia's parents. The whole house was dark because there was no electricity. While they were talking, Davis received a call from Karen. He excused himself and answered the call. 
Karen told him that during their last phone conversation, Davis implied that customer service wasn't a profession, and Karen admitted that he might be right. As they were talking, the electricity went back on, and Davis decided to leave Julia's parents' house. During the car ride, Davis was still on call with Karen and was asking the latter things about her, like what she looks like. After the call, Davis went to a random diner and asked the waitress if there was any Karen Moreno there. While he was eating, Karen called him again and told him that she was also in the same diner. She played music on the jukebox, but she got sad and decided to leave. When she said that she was still in the parking lot, Davis looked out the window and saw Karen smoking in a car. Davis asked if she could come inside, but Karen declined and drove away. The next day, Davis was in a meeting, but he couldn't focus as his mind was on his last conversation with Karen. After the meeting, his co-worker passed by him to go to the restroom and saw that the creaky cubicle door was destroyed. As Davis was leaving the building, Phil was called into Davis's office by the latter's assistant, and when he came in, he saw the dismantled computer. This is an indication that Davis tried to fix things again by taking everything apart first, only to leave it alone as he couldn't put them back together again. Davis went to a warehouse owned by Champion, the vending machine company he's been sending letters to. He went to the office and noticed an organizer where Karen's name was written. The owner of the company, Carl, approached him to ask what he needed. Davis said that he had a customer service issue but didn't say anything else and left. In the parking lot, he was looking at the document Phil gave him. He was reminded of Phil telling him to meet a professional to talk to, and he knew that his father-in-law must think he was going crazy. Davis drove home, and as he was driving home, Margot, Julia's mother, was seen getting into her bathroom when she noticed that the lights on her bathroom wall were dismantled. Back at his home, Davis called Karen to tell her how he dismantled a $2,000 cappuccino machine. Karen then mentioned that she has a son named Chris. Karen then told Davis that he shouldn't have visited her in the office as it sets a dangerous precedent, before ending the call without further explanation. Davis then decided to write another letter to send to Champion, but this time, Karen was directly addressed. Davis talked about the blonde woman he saw staring at him on the train. He approached the woman and introduced himself. He sat in front of the woman and started telling her things about him. Davis wrote in the letter how the woman was quiet, but for some reason, he was so comfortable sharing her things about him, even things that included Julia. The blonde woman asked him why he married Julia, and Davis answered that he didn't know and that maybe it was because marrying Julia was easy. Davis then stated how he found the magazines the blonde woman left when she reached her stop. And in the letter, Davis implied that he knew the blonde woman in the train was her and that he also knew where she lived. After reading this, Karen, who was reading Davis's letter in the bathtub, panicked. Davis was outside her home, waiting for her to come out. But instead of Karen, it was Carl who opened the door. Karen followed shortly after and told Carl that Davis had some problems with one of their machines. Carl was suspicious but still went back inside when Karen told him so. Once Carl was out of sight, Karen apologized for calling and following him. Davis then handed her the letter he wrote 10 minutes prior to that moment. Davis told Karen that it was the last letter before leaving. Inside the house, Karen was able to read the first two sentences of the letter before Carl arrived, and she rushed to throw the letter into the trash can before Carl could see it. Carl questioned if she was having an affair with Davis, and Karen told him maybe Davis was just lonely. The next day, Karen was at the airport to send Carl off. Carl was talking about opening a new warehouse, but all Karen could focus on were the people's luggage and the soldier guarding the airport nearby. She smiled as she remembered what Davis wrote in the letter about them. Later on, Karen went back home and took the letter from the trash can to read it. In the letter, Davis talked about how Phil called him into the office and asked him about all the things he had dismantled. Davis told Phil that he just wanted to see what was inside them and how they worked. So Phil told him to take some time off. That was when Davis decided to look for Karen after he noticed a group of people tearing down a house so it could be rebuilt. Davis paid the guys to let him help in tearing down the house. As demolishing has apparently become his new hobby. Later that night, Karen visited him, drenched because of Davis's sprinklers. Davis invited her in, and the two of them ate together. When Davis mentioned how he hated his house, Karen invited him to her house, where the two of them laid on two different beds beside each other. Karen opened up about how she doesn't think she really loves Carl that way and how she wants to be like Davis too, who is now doing what he wanted to do. The next day, Davis woke up without Karen, and he met Chris, who was being rude to him. Davis called Chris out for cursing a lot and told the kid how stupid he sounds. Davis went back home, changed his clothes, and left again when he noticed something suspicious. He called Karen and told her about a station wagon following him. Davis and Karen met up in a warehouse, where Karen apparently gets her prescription from a guy named Ray. Karen introduced Ray to Davis, who noticed the carousel behind the curtain. 
Ray mentioned that the carousel needs to be torn down, and Davis eagerly offered to help, and Ray just found him strange. Davis and Karen then rode the carousel before they went to the beach, where they had fun together. Davis then talked about how Julia used to love the ocean, and when Karen asked him if he missed his late wife, Davis couldn't answer. David has been hallucinating about Julia, and in his bathroom, he saw Julia again. Sitting back down, Davis realized that something must be wrong with him, as he couldn't feel anything at all. He went to the hospital to get his heart checked, and he discovered that a part of his heart was missing. Based on the bite pattern, the doctor concluded that it was a gypsy moth. Davis wrote another letter to Karen. He went to the beach, remembering his childhood, where his mother would run her fingers through Davis's hair and kiss his eyelids whenever he was sick. That action used to change everything for Davis, and he wondered if it was too late for him to experience it again. Davis then visited Karen's home and saw Chris dancing and singing along to a song. Chris went out of the house and saw Davis chilling. He told Davis how he got suspended from school after talking about their military presence in the Middle East and even showed a demonstration of how he presented it, which amazed Davis. Inside the house, Davis had lunch with Karen and Chris, who started arguing in front of him. Karen excused herself a while later, leaving Davis and Chris to talk to each other. Davis went to help the construction workers again in demolishing the house. And he got into a small accident when he accidentally stepped on a piece of wood with a nail sticking out of it. Meanwhile, Karen went to the beach to write a letter to her son, talking about how she missed him, who has now become distant from her. Later that night, Karen was reading the letter Davis wrote for her when Davis came and sat on the couch. They created a port using the couch, and the two of them bonded together. The next day, Chris was in the bathroom, playing with a gun and putting on lipstick, when Davis came in. Chris hid the lipstick but let Davis see the gun. They went into the woods nearby and practiced shooting the gun. Davis wore a vest, and Chris shot him twice before they went back to the house. Later on, Chris was playing the drums, and Davis was messing around while listening to him. Davis went home after listening to the songs Chris downloaded on his phone. The next day, Davis went to the meeting about the foundation, listening and dancing to the music. But his actions during the meeting angered Phil, who reprimanded him after the meeting. Davis told Phil that he wanted to do something for Julia too, but the foundation just didn't feel right for him. Davis went back home, remembering how Julia used to comfort him after a long day at work. The next day, Davis was with Chris, shopping for tools together, when Chris asked Davis if he thought he was gay. Chris talked about a male classmate he finds attractive, and Davis advised him to pretend to like girls for a few years before he moved to a different city, maybe due to the discrimination Chris might receive. They went to Davis's house after shopping for tools and destroyed Davis's house. Sitting down on the house's pavement, they saw the station wagon that had been following Davis, and the latter ran towards it, scaring the driver of the station wagon away. One day, Davis and Chris went back to Karen's house, and Chris informed his mother that Davis picked him up after school. Karen thanked Davis, and that night, she kissed her son on the forehead while he was sleeping. The next day, Davis and Chris were back at Davis's house. Davis bought a bulldozer and demolished his house with it. He and Chris continued demolishing the house afterward. Davis destroyed a drawer when he saw a folded piece of paper and an ultrasound. Davis sat down in silence as he realized that his late wife had died along with their unborn child. One night, Phil invited Karen to a party that Phil and Margot were hosting to celebrate the foundation that they started in honor of Julia. He saw Chris sneaking out, wearing an earring and makeup. Then he drove to Phil and Margot's house, imagining Karen as Julia on the way. At the party, Phil confronted Davis for bringing another woman to the party. During the announcement of the three students who won scholarships, Karen burst out laughing when the last student was introduced. Everyone went silent, and she excused herself in embarrassment. To divert everyone's attention, Davis asked Phil and Margot if Julia had told them about her pregnancy. When Phil and Margot didn't answer, Davis asked why Julia hadn't told him before walking away. Margot followed him and told him that Julia kept the baby a secret because it wasn't his baby. Margot then revealed that Julia had been cheating on Davis and got pregnant with the other man's baby. And that Margot accompanied Julia to abort the baby. Davis went back to Karen's house and saw that Carl was there. Seeing him enraged Carl, who beat Davis up. Meanwhile, Karen received a call from the hospital when Chris got rushed in after getting beaten up at the party he attended. The next day, it was like deja vu for Davis as he woke up in the hospital seat. Karen informed Davis of what happened when the doctor called her, and she immediately went to Chris, crying as she looked at her unconscious son. Davis went to Julia's tomb when an unknown came to. Davis assumed that it was the man Julia was cheating with. But it turns out that it was actually the man who was driving the other car that hit them and killed Julia. The man cried as he apologized for what he had done, and Davis comforted him. 
Davis went back to his car, remembering everything about Julia, and for the first time since Julia died, Davis cried. He met up with Phil to apologize. He admitted that while there was love between him and Julia, Davis didn't take proper care of it. Davis then told Phil that he wanted to do something else for Julia, and he wanted Phil to be a part of it. Davis and Phil sat down, and at that moment, Davis showed vulnerability in front of Phil. Phil has renovated his house to make it look more homely, unlike the plain white house he and Julie used to live in together. Davis also got the carousel Ray was planning on tearing down fixed. It was Davis's plan all along to do all the things Julia had always wanted to do with him, things that he knew would have made Julia so happy. With the now fixed carousel, Davis put it in the middle of the beach and allowed children to ride it, along with Phil and Margot. It was to make up for Julia's love that he took advantage of it. Davis remembered how he used to look so dead while riding the carousel with Julia, who was still happy despite the lack of effort from Davis. After his little project for Julia, Davis received a letter from Chris, who told him to go to the pier to see his gift for him. When he arrived, Davis stood behind a group and witnessed the demolition of a building. Chris was far away, watching Davis through the binoculars. After watching the demolition, Davis left and ran alongside the children, cheering as he let himself go.